Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for the UFC 294 co-main event. Hamzat Chemaev taking on the former welterweight champion, Kamaru Usman. Um, well, what a fight this is. What a what a turn up for the books. Now, first of all, Chemaev against Paolo Costa. That's an interesting fight. You know, they're two interesting characters. They're both very, very different. But I feel like if I'm Chemaev coming into that fight with Paolo Costa, I'm thinking, okay, well, this guy's most likely going to be maybe 10, 10 pounds heavier than me during fight night, but there's a lot of muscle mass on him and he's not the best of wrestlers. So I feel like I can squeeze him and drag him to the floor and wear him out and tire him out. And and I feel like Chemayev coming in there with the idea of playing the long game against Paolo Costa would have been, you know, probably probably his best route to victory. Um, that's a different thing against Kamaru Usman for, for a few different reasons. Well, first of all... Um, this fight's at welterweight, isn't it? Uh, sorry, at uh, middleweight. Middleweight. So what you've got to think about is Kamaru Usman probably being a around the same weight as Chemaev. I mean, he's going he's gonna to walk around big. He's a big welterweight. You know, he, he's, he's six foot tall, listed. Even if he's 5'10", he's probably walking around at 200 pounds, maybe a bit more. And he's probably lean at that as well, which is scary because when he cuts that weight, that is pure water cut. He's not cutting body fat off that frame or anything. So Kamar Usman cutting from even saying if even if he was 195, cutting from 195 to 170 and then trying to refuel back up to that point, there's always going to be a drop off somewhere, right? Even a supremely conditioned athlete over five rounds, if they're pushed to a point, they're going to drop off more than they would if they didn't do the weight cut, right? This Kamar Usman that's still doing a weight cut and he's still going to come in of a comparable size to Chimaev. He's not going to have gone through that process of cutting all the way down to 170. I feel like we're going to see a Kamaru Usman that's a bit looser and a bit more energetic and he's not quite as concerned about wrestling hard because I feel like there's a there's a there's much more of a drop off and this is just my experience from from my own personal experience and from watching fighters who are strong wrestlers that do cut a lot of weight. I feel like they realize that the more they wrestle after a hard weight cut, the the the, the quicker they're going to deplete and the slower they're going to look. Um, I think Kamar Usman coming in at 185 is going to feel like, right, I'm going to be able to grab a hold of you and wrestle for 15 minutes, no bother. And I feel like Chemayev has a really, really good burst at the start of the, of the round. Like that first five minutes is going to be... <laughs> long like especially if he's coming in to wrestle because they're going to be trying to compete with wrestling and this is where this is a very very different fight for Chimaev because against Paolo Costa he could come in and he could put on a wrestling uh you know a, a high wrestling pace in that first round and know that he's probably going to win a lot of those exchanges even if he's not able to take him down and keep him down he's going to keep him in a defensive posture so so Paolo Costa's using energy to stay in the first round and stay alive this has got a different twist to it because Chemayev wrestling against Kamaru Usman, who's not cutting as much weight and he's confident that he's going to push hard for 15 minutes, he's going to wrestle back. And, and this is where it can become very draining for Chemayev very quickly. And we have seen him slow down and we have seen him... Like I'm, I'm a big fan of his style, but the, we'll go back to the tail of the tape. He's 12-0. He's and, and at 12-0, and 0, having manhandled the majority of people... In your head, you feel like, well, that's the best route to victory. What he did against the leech, come in, pick him up, body lock, trip him, take him down, carry him over to Dana, put him on the floor, choke him out. You know, like his mentality is I'm going to come in and I'm going to manhandle everybody because because this is this is my route to victory. I feel like I feel like that's not necessarily the smart thing to do against uh, against Kamara Usman because I feel like he's going to at least be able to nullify a lot of that wrestling pressure. The 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 attack that we got on Kevin Holland from Chimaev was was awesome. I mean, I, I didn't so much like the like the, the like the glove touch situation, but the chain of takedown attempts from that point where he's he's you know, uh, I mean, what what was it? He he was on a body lock. He went front table one side, front table the other. It's just like like he's constant chaining it outside reaps and and it, I mean his body lock clinch is incredibly strong. But he used a lot of energy in that first round against Kevin Holland. And and the, the DOS attack, the way he had to keep recycling it is exhausting as well. Like because there's a hurry to what he's doing, there's a tendency to expend more energy than he needs to. 
And against someone who's got a record of 20 and 3 and has been a champion and knows how to pace himself. Like, if we know one thing about Kamaru Usman, it's he knows how to pace himself well over 25 minutes. Like, I remember one of the criticisms back in, when was it? When he beat Emil Mech and he was on the mic and he was like, that was me at 30%. Like, oh... Give us a little bit more because people paying a lot of money for tickets. You know what I mean? Like there was annoyance because he was kind of, he was he was kind of cruising and coasting a little bit and making it look easy when you knew full well that he could put his foot on the gas. I feel like if he's forced to put his foot on the gas, he's going to rise to a real good level in this fight. And I think we're going to see a really, really interesting grappling exchange in that first round. But I think if we do, then it will have been triggered by Chimaev wanting to start fast. What I expect from the first round, having said all of that is that I think we're going to see quite a cautious striking exchange between the two of them. I think Chimaev is going to try and feel out Kamaru Usman, and I feel like like Usman, especially given the striking that we've seen against Burns and Masvidal, I feel like the clean and crispness of his striking, just establishing that jab to start with, could potentially set the tone for the whole fight. The, the clean, straight punching, the, the economical, emotionless straight punching of Usman and, 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 and what we saw, especially against Gilbert Burns, where it was, it, was, it, it was emotionless against someone that he's close to, to be able to just stand there chambered and just fire the jab out without any, any build up, any, any twisting back, any facial tension or anything. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. And he's got Trevor Whitman that's teaching him crisp basics. And with that kind of crisp basics and the, the, the power and athleticism that Kamaru Usman's got, he could use a jab cross and, and the threat of a takedown to beat the vast majority of people. Something that Gilbert Burns did very well, which might be something that we see Kamaru Usman implement into his game, something Burns did very well against Chemayev, and I, I do feel like it it had a, a, a detriment on his conditioning, was working to the body. Like Burns has got incredibly hard kicks, hard body kicks, hard punches to the body. And I do feel like the moment where we saw Chemayev kind of start to slow down, it was after he'd taken a few of those big shots. And even if they're not getting through, you're taking them on the arms and it, it's still it's still not, not comfortable. It can knock the gas out of you. You have to <clears throat> brace to take those powerful shots. Um, that could potentially be something that Kamaru Usman could utilize to... to rack up points to slow Chimaev down and especially if you get out of the first round and Chimaev is now okay he's not now not quite as eager as he was in the first round and he's trying to establish his lead hand like that's something that Usman does have to watch out for Chimaev in a southpaw stance against Gilbert Burns was able to do the same thing with his jab just a power jab straight through the center and dropped him like I think both of these guys have got incredibly good straight boxing fundamentals and they're both great wrestlers I feel like there's a there's an eagerness in Chamayo's game which makes him very exciting against fighters that he can roll over. But I don't feel like this is a fighter that he can roll over. So the question is, does he run at him and hit a wall and then have to regroup in the second and third round? Or does he go, okay, hang on a minute. I, I, I put myself in situations against Gilbert Burns that look less than favorable. Because you remember, like coming into the Gilbert Burns fight, like everyone was like, hang on a minute, this guy... What had he landed against the two the uh, against uh, McKee and um, why am I spacing on his name? Um, like he, what, what what was it like one hundred and fifteen punches to one or something like that? John Phillips, there we go. Before I've even seen his name, uh, yeah, John Phillips, Reese McKee. Like they they were it was an early f second round and a first round finish in his first two fights in the UFC. He was coming off. Six fights, all of which were finishers. Most of them in the first round, couple of early second. And when I'm saying early second, I'm talking five seconds of the second round. He's made quick work of everybody. But then Gilbert Burns, he wasn't going away lightly. He was dropped in the first round. He was wrestled in the first round, but he hung in there and he stood his ground. And he's, you know, he's like Gilbert Burns is a stalwart. It's a lovely word. It's not a nice word. It's an ugly word, but it's a nice meaning. It's you know, it's a that's the hardened battle veteran that you look down the battle line and you see him in his armor that's dented and tarnished and worn from other experiences on the battlefield, and you go, I feel a bit more confident seeing him there because he's got the experience. Like that's Gilbert Burns for me. He's done lightweight. He's done welterweight. He's fought for the title. You know, like. Gilbert Burns shown as, sh shown? showed as parts of Chimaev's game that we'd not seen 
previously in the UFC, certainly. And I feel like we're going to see that again with, with Kamara Usman because Burns is a tough individual. We remember what Kamara Usman did to Burns. Cleaner, straighter, punching, emotionless, less wind-up, exactly the same kind of power. This is a fascinating fight. Big respect to both of these guys for stepping up on short notice. I would have loved to have seen the Paolo Costa fight, but this throws Kamaru Usman into a, into a mix that I'm very excited to see him in. Like, think about this middleweight division right now and, and these guys that could potentially be find themselves in a title shot very soon. It, it's a wild time. Izzy's away. The, uh, the the champion is Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland's already acknowledged Chamayev. What was the video we were talking about earlier, Jamie, where he was like, you just don't hurt anybody. We all know you're better than us. You know what I mean? It's like, like that, that must be like, like seeing a shark swimming in the water behind you, knowing that Chamayev's creeping up. But if I'm also Strickland, I'm looking at him taking on Kamar Usman and thinking, okay, phew, that might buy me a second. Because I hope, that Kamar Usman's going to give him a hard time and then go back down to welterweight so I don't have to deal with that guy. Because I do feel like Kamar Usman at middleweight is going to be a force. <laughs> I think he's going to be a force. I didn't do the tail of the tape, did I, Jamie? That's the bit I missed. Because it is interesting, this tail of the tape. Sometimes I don't find it particularly interesting, but this one tells a lot about the fight, I think. So Kamar Usman, 20 wins and three losses. Hamzat Chimaev, 12 wins and no defeats. Average fight time for Chimaev, 5 minutes and 1 second. For Kamaru Usman, 17 minutes and 35 seconds. Lots of time pacing himself, controlling it. Doesn't get emotional, doesn't get excited. Like That is a quality I have, I have overlooked. I like to see people get kind of wild in there, but that's because it's fun to watch. And that's what Chimaev brings. He brings that, that maniac atmosphere. But you can't underestimate the silent killer like like a Kamara Usman who just goes about his work in a this is this is the the job that I chose and I'm gonna get it done. Like I like I, I, I like the way that Kamara Usman approaches these fights and, and I do feel like that coldness is a benefit in a, in his technical ability as well. Call me crazy. Um six foot two for Chimaev, so he's a two inch height advantage for Usman. I, I do feel like that's gonna look like slightly more when we see them face off. However, I do feel like Kamar Usman does have a longer reach for Chimaev uh, than Chimaev. So Chimaev's at 75 and Kamar Usman's listed at 76. And the reason for this is because they me they measure wingspan from fingertip to fingertip. So that also is taking into account the width of their shoulders. And if you if you think like Max Holloway has got quite a quite um long arms but short but narrow shoulders so he pays for it because he's kind of he's very narrow he's a bit like a fish finger in his body like you look at Chemayev and the way that he's built it's the same he's got quite narrow shoulders whereas Chemayev whereas um uh, Usman's got wide broad shoulders so it, like same with Leon right he's got a narrow waist and broad shoulders so those long arms go on the ends of long of wide shoulders and it makes their their reach even even more Volkanovski another one broad shoulders long reach so Usman with those straight clean punches, he's not at any kind of deficit, I don't think, in this in this fight striking from a physiological standpoint. Regarding the the, the output, again, Chemaev, you know, his, his striking output is going to be higher than Gilbert than uh, than uh, Kamar Usman, but that's based based on the fact that this is strike lander per minute and he's got an average fight time of five minutes. So that's going to bring that number down. So his his fight time being shorter is going to affect the the strike lander per minute um striking accuracy and striking defense i always think are quite interesting the striking defense of chamayev took a real hit in the gilbert burns fight striking accuracy is is still up at 59 percent, which is better than kamara usman but again level of competition length of fight time etc etc all of these are um taken into account now this has got Kamar Usman listed at 97% takedown offense and Chimaev listed at 100% takedown offense. But like that 100% takedown offense is based on not many people trying to take him down. Um, Usman, I'm sure he's the stat leader for takedown offenses and they're like overall in the UFC. Is that right, Jamie? I'm sure I saw that somewhere. His takedown offense is going to be formidable. And he's going to be very strong physically as well to, to couple with that. So even if Chemaev's wrestling ability is nullified, but he's the physically stronger athlete, then you know he, he's able to get his way. But I feel like this is going to be a this is why we're potentially going to see a striking exchange because neither of these guys might want to try their wrestling and not succeed. 
like Usman has already kind of moved away from his wrestling because he's realized that punching somebody on the chin clean one time puts him away quicker and he doesn't have to do all the grappling that, that is exhausting regardless of whether you're winning or losing. For Chemaev, he's still got that mentality of, of, of manhandling people. And I feel like if we see him take a step forward in this fight where he kind of is going to pace himself and pick his moments to, to, to wrestle, of course he's going to be a, a real handful. But I think the experience, as well as the the, the technical skills and uh, physical condition of Kamaru Usman, is going to be uh, is going to be a a real challenge for uh, Chemaev. Should be a really good fight this one. Of course, I'm very excited for it. I've done a war room for the main event as well. Make sure you check that out. And uh, as of right now, we haven't done a picks podcast, but we are planning on doing one as well. Look at that Coco main event. Uh, main event. You've got Ankalaev against Johnny Walker, Mokayev against Tim Elliott. <sighs> Good times. Good events. Looking forward to these fights. All right. Thanks. I'll see you next time.